What is going on, Brian's Backslide homies? My name is Tyler and we are back on another episode today. We're headed out to do a little bit of walleye fishing on Green Bay. It is March 11th today, and believe it or not, we still have some ice out in the bay. Usually, this time of year, you get a lot of those walleyes pushing up shallow, and you're gonna have a really good shot at catching a nice fish. So, Aaron and I are headed out today. Been doing a lot of grinding recently, just going two days, pretty much every single weekend, Saturday and Sunday, when we got the time. Just going out for an evening, we're gonna hit that evening window at about half an hour or so before sunset. Things really start to fire. We're hoping that we get set up, start seeing fish this evening, and hopefully they're hungry and I'm sure they probably will be also if you guys have not please go check out my socials down below I got them all linked in the description for those of you that like to shop at the real shot in Appleton I have a code DC Bronzies 10 that you can use at checkout on their website. They got a bunch of great stuff, great gear. You can get rods, reels, baits, pretty much anything you can think of. They've got it. Go check out their website. I'll link that down below. Use my code for 10% off. Stick with us. I'm going to give you guys all sorts of tips on how to do this late ice fishing on the bay for walleyes to make sure that you guys catch walleyes on your next outing. Well, Aaron and I made it out. It's a little bit breezy. We've got like a northeast wind here. Interestingly enough, we've got about five inches of ice and it's not great ice. With all the warm weather and the snow and everything that we've had going on here, the ice is pretty crappy. I mean, you can see it's pretty crusty on top. Definitely not the nicest ice. We are out to the spot that we want to be on. When you're fishing these early spring walleyes, you want to be targeting that shallower water. I'm going to show you guys what I do when I set up my tip-ups, give you guys a few tips, and of course then we're going to head over to the live scope, do some jigging, get some sweet footage on the live scope. The goal is to catch one walleye using the live scope cam, and we'll see if we can get it done, I'm not sure, but prime time should be around 5 o'clock. So we got a couple hours to fish and wait. Finally, we haven't seen any fish. And Aaron just noticed this uh, flag up. It was slow rolling here just a second ago. Let's we'll see if, uh, if we're able to get lucky on this one. I don't know what it's gonna be, if it's gonna be a pike or a walleye, but. That feels like a pike. <laughs> feels very pikey. Ooh. It's heavy. Is that a walleye? There's a walleye. It's a nice one. It felt like a pike with the head shakes it was giving me. Oh, they're here. We gotta get jigging here. This one ain't bad. Give me a run for my money here. 20 incher maybe? 22 incher? A little more spunky than the than the big girls actually. Come on girl. She's giving me circles around the hole. Come on girl. There we go. It's not a bad fish at all. Beauty of a walleye. I'm gonna send her back. Just another eye going back, baby. Let's catch some more. All right guys, pro tip number one, you always gotta chum your hole. My personal favorite, some Cheez-Its right here. You know, just take a nice scoop and handful, put it in Tyler's hole right here, crush him up a little bit. Beautiful. Gets the scents going, gets the fish amped up. Plus, it makes you hungry with that nice cheesy glow floating on top. I'm gonna show you my tip up setup. Right now, I'm running a eight pound fluorocarbon leader tied to my tip up line. I like to do long leaders because a lot of this water you're fishing is very, very clear and you just don't want those fish to see your black tip up line in any way. But I'm huge on the details. Those small things that you key in on are really gonna help you catch bigger fish and put more fish on the ice. So here are two tricks of mine. I'm using really big shiners and suckers today and sometimes you'll get it where the shiner will pull your flag off all the time. I like to tilt my spool so that this, the tougher side to pull, is literally sitting into the rod right there. You can see how that spool is kind of sideways there. And what that allows is it keeps that shiner from being able to pull your flag. And the reason is, is because there's a little bit more resistance right there on that flag. 
Now this can be a good and bad thing because you really don't want those fish to feel much resistance when they do eat that minnow and start running with it. But it's just a little extra just to keep that shiner from popping your flag all the time. Next thing I like to do is I like to use hole covers, not only because it insulates and keeps ice from forming, but the biggest thing in my opinion is it keeps that hole dark. It's not letting a bunch of light in from up top so those fish don't see that light because obviously that's gonna look unnatural to them when they've got all this snow covered ice and you've got one hole with a bunch of light shining down right on your bait. So I like to use hole covers for that reason. The other thing is I like to use small size 10 or 12 trebles usually. Again just to keep that presentation looking very natural. I'll actually tie a loop knot to that treble hook and that allows that shiner to rock that hook a little more giving it a little more action and just making it look a little bit more natural. I'll usually do a pretty small split shot 10 to 12 inches above my hook there. Again, all of this in mind to just hone in on those small details and try to improve your success rate with tip ups. All right, we just caught that one on the tip up there. The thing was pretty spunky, but uh, we're hoping to get some jigging. I haven't seen any fish yet. just clabbered it. <laughs> Jig and wrap right to the face there. That happened Smoked way too quick. Eyes. I kept telling myself, I'm like, I should start the cameras. I should start the cameras. <laughs> Literally huge mark just bombing in. There we go. Look at that beauty. That's a nice one right there. We'll take her. I don't know if this is a male. Looks like it might be a male. Hard to say. You can see they've been coming up in the sand based on what's on the belly there. But that was a fun fish to catch, holy crap. Right, we're recording now after that absolute crap show. Of course I learned my lesson. I knew that was gonna happen. This is all I'm using. I believe it's a purple tiger jig and wrap. Pretty small too, but just pounded it in the sand. Fish came in, boom, just cranked it right away. That was awesome. You didn't go very far with it. Nope. Dang. Ah. Hard to say. Ah. Well, let's get jigging again. I want to replicate that so you guys can see on the live scope what that looked like. No bait on the jigging wrap, just a bear, bear jigging wrap. Fish flew in right up to it and boom, I felt them pick it out of the sand. Oh, I just had one eat when I was standing here. He's on the bottom right now on me. Huge mark. Got it. No way. What is going on? He came off, dude. Whoa. No, I had him. He just pulled my line into the ice and my line wedged into the bottom of the ice here. <sighs> dude, that was a big fish. That hurts, that hurts. I stood up and I was about to put my glove in my pocket. I looked down and I feel something, huge mark. My jig and wrap was just up in the water column. That is gonna do it for the video, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. I had an absolute blast with Aaron on this outing. Catching a couple walleyes. We only ended up catching two. I lost that one at the hole. It was pretty unfortunate, but it happens. That's how it goes. I think that one was probably a little bit bigger than the other two, maybe in that like 24 to 25 inch range. Regardless, absolutely awesome time. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Instagram or any of my social media platforms linked below. And don't forget, use code DCBronzy's for 10% off at therealshot.com for all your fishing needs. I think that may be it for ice fishing for the year, guys. I've learned a ton, have caught so many nice walleyes, and I'm already getting excited for next year. But it's time to start thinking about open water. So, thank you guys so much for watching. We will catch you on the next episode of DC Bronzies. Peace. Yeah.